and more. Here's a look. For coming this morning, uh, less than 24 hours after yesterday's act of terror, we wanted to organize uh, a briefing for you with the information that we have. The mayor is here, uh, the members of our congressional delegation, all of the law enforcement leadership. We have several people who want to present uh, to you this morning and take your questions. A couple points I want to, uh, I want to mention at the outset. Uh, I told you yesterday that the uh, FBI has taken charge of the investigation. Special Agent in Charge Rick Delorier uh, will speak um, shortly. Uh, it's important to clarify that two and only two explosive devices were found yesterday. Other parcels, all other parcels in the uh, area of the blast have been examined, but there are no unexploded bombs. There were no unexploded explosive devices found. Uh, over 150 people were injured uh, yesterday in the, uh, in the blast, some uh, gravely. Our thoughts go out to all of those injured and killed uh, and to their families and friends. I personally want to thank the extraordinary wor uh, first responders for their uh, just extraordinary work yesterday. Um, every single one of them, those who were on site and those who got to the site promptly uh, thereafter performed beautifully as have the area hospitals and I've been calling around uh, to the heads of the hospitals personally to thank them uh, as well. It's our hope that tomorrow we will organize an interfaith prayer service to help our community heal. We don't have details on that yet, but we will uh, provide those details when we, when we have them. There is a support center that was opened yesterday in what we call the castle opposite uh, the Park Plaza Hotel on uh, Arlington and Stewart Street, I think it is. The mayor and his uh, uh, has uh, provided staff uh, to help people cope with, uh, uh, with this extraordinary event, and it will be open from 9, I think, until 5 o'clock or beyond uh, this evening. Finally, um, everyone should expect uh, continued heightened police presence, uh, and everyone should continue uh, personally to be vigilant. The investigation continues, uh, and until it is done, uh, all of those uh, uh, in law enforcement represented by the leaders uh, here will be present in force uh, in the area around the blast and throughout the city. And with that, let me turn it over to Mayor Menino. Uh, thank you, Governor. Uh, yesterday, the terror was brought to uh, the city of Boston. Tragedy was brought to one of our neighbors also. This is a close na that place, the city of Boston. Here we know our neighbors. We grieve for them. We grieve for the little boy who we knew from Dorchester. But also today I want to say uh, we know our heroes also. They are the men and women who wear helmets, who wear the badges, the runners, who helped us yesterday during this uh, time of need. And as we get go together on this issue with all the law enforcement officials, we're going to make sure the city pulls together. You know, we got it under control. Let's continue to work together. Let's keep offering a, a helping hand the individuals who may need it during this uh, very difficult time in our city's history. But I just say to all of you, I've uh, been mayor for 20 years now. I've never seen uh, law enforcement pull together, working together to solve our crime in our city as they have, but also help people pull together. The business community, the neighbors, everyone. This is a tragedy, but Boston's a strong city. We're a city that'll get through this. And uh, like the governor said, we set up a uh, resource center over at the castle near uh, the Park Plaza Hotel, where staff will be there available to give information to individuals who've been involved in the marathon. It's open from 9 to 5, and the phone number is, uh, let me think of that phone number, 635-5040, I believe. And, uh, and our hotline, is city, no, the number is, the wrong number, 617-534-5050. And also, the 24-hour hotline that you need, uh, need information also, that number is 617 617- Six three five four five zero zero. And over the last uh, several hours, we've received calls from all over the world to ask us information about the uh, our tragedy and how they can help us. Uh, so this is a t bad day for Boston, but I think that if you pull together, we'll get through it. We're strong, so a lot of people are willing to work together to make this a better place for all our people. And so, as we gather here today with all our officials, let's say Boston will overcome. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Senator. Thank you.
Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the President of the United States has pledged his full support uh, in all efforts both to keep the city safe and to find the person who did this and bring them to justice. Uh, we did not have to reach out to the president. The president reached out to us. He called the governor, he called the mayor, he called the members of the delegation because the president is actively involved here in responding. On behalf of our congressional delegation, Senator Cowan is here with me and Congressman Lynch and all of the members of our delegation. We want to extend our thanks to the first responders, to the firefighters, to the police officers, to the EMS, to everyone on the scene, including the volunteers who came and helped those in trouble and uh, helped uh, save lives. Uh, we also want to thank those from all around the country and all around the world whose prayers and thoughts and offers of help have poured in. We are deeply grateful. As the mayor says, Boston will survive. Thank you, Governor. Good morning. My name is Rick Delorier. I'm the special agent in charge of the FBI's Boston Division. I would like to start this morning by thanking the first responders from Boston EMS and Boston Fire Department and the volunteer physicians, nurses, and medical staff from the community who volunteered at the marathon. Their services and heroic actions saved lives yesterday afternoon. We continue to work shoulder to shoulder with our JTTF partners at the Boston Police Department, the Massachusetts State Police, as well as all our other JTTF agencies. Our mission is clear, to bring to justice those responsible for the marathon bombing. The American public wants answers. The citizens of the city of Boston and the Commonwealth of Massachusetts want and deserve answers. This group of dedicated men and women standing before you today pledge to do everything possible to get those answers. This remains a very active investigation. Our ongoing investigation in various locations throughout the area goes on. However, there are no known additional threats. We continue to interview various witnesses and process the crime scene, which could take some time. The citizens of Massachusetts and the city of Boston should expect to see the FBI and its JTTF partners conducting investigative activity in the greater eastern Massachusetts and Boston area. Assistance from the public remains critical in establishing a timeline of events which leads to swift conclusion through due diligence and strong investigative activity. We commend the public, we commend the citizens of Boston and the citizens of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts for the information that has been provided to law enforcement so far, and we strongly encourage that uh, assistance to continue. It is paramount to explain the FBI and our JTTF role to a greater extent, the volume of tips we have received in reiterating the resources we provide. We have received voluminous tips over the last uh, 18 hours since the, uh, since the incident. We have staffed our 1-800 call FBI tip line and we continue to encourage individuals to contact that line with any additional tips. We are bringing additional victim assistance and evidence response team resources from our headquarters components and other field offices to Boston and they are on site working as we speak processing evidence at the crime scene. To the extent that the crime scene still plays in Copley perimeter and, and it continues to be a crime scene, it may be that for several days. The FBI JTTF is logically following up on a variety of leads. You will see us and our law enforcement partners interviewing, maybe your neighbor or coworker or even yourself in coming days. We encourage you to please cooperate with law enforcement authorities. The resources the FBI and the JTTF allow for swift action which we hope will yield quick results, but that does not diminish our diligence and persistence in combing through the high volume of evidence and leads that we are processing right now. We are just beginning upon that path. Uh, thank you very much. I'm, a, yes. I'm Gene Marquez, Acting Special Agent in Charge, ATF Boston Field Division. At this time, ATF has done a partial NRT, National Response Team activation. We are bringing our explosive specialist here to the scene, and we will be working jointly with the FBI and its partners on the JTTF. We have certified explosive specialists, we have uh, explosives enforcement officers, we have special agent bomb techs, and we have canines that are trained uh, to detect any explosive devices or any residue. At this time, we have approximately uh, 30 forensic specialists en route or on the scene. And uh, to dispel any rumors, there were it, it, there were rumors floating around that there were seven devices, up to seven devices at one point. That is not true. 
I think that that happened as a result of some device, some suspect packages that were disrupted. Uh, but we only have two devices that we're aware of, and both of those devices uh, were the ones that involved in the that did the damage and were involved in the in the explosives incident. Um, at this time, we are looking for the public's cooperation. We're looking if there's any video, any photographic evidence. If you can please contact the FBI hotline or the city's hotline, we'd like to review any kind of media that you have out there uh, pertaining that, that might give us uh, additional investigative leads, and we are pursuing those investigative leads at this time. The scene is going to take several days to process, and we just ask for your patience as we're working in that area and for your cooperation. Good morning. I'm United States Attorney Carmen Ortiz. First, I, I want to extend my condolences to the families of the loved ones who were lost in yesterday's attack on the city of Boston, as well as those that were hurt and may still be fighting for their lives. Our thoughts and our prayers are go out to them. What happened yesterday was a terrible tragedy, yet it was amazing to see, as you have heard from my colleagues here, uh, how people uh, just helped one another, ran toward the blast just to assist another person in greater need. People who um, were just uh, there for those that were hurt uh, and in a dire situation. It was amazing to see how the city of Boston the peop and people from around the world that were part of yesterday's uh, Boston Marathon helped one another, consoled each other. There are so many moving parts to an investigation such as this. And I can't begin to thank everyone who has been involved, law enforcement, medical professionals, emergency responders, and really just regular citizens who became heroes yesterday. I want to repeat, as I did state it yesterday, this is an active and it's an ongoing investigation. But rest assured that we are bringing all of the necessary resources to assist in this matter and that we will conduct uh, all that we can with all of our law enforcement partners. I've been in touch with the Attorney General several times, Eric Holder, and he has pledged all of the resources from the Department uh, and others on behalf of the federal government to help Boston recover uh, from yesterday. I ask for your patience and your understanding as we continue to pursue leads, to gather evidence, and to get to the bottom of who did this and why. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Ed Davis. I'm a police commissioner for the city of Boston. Um, we are in the process of uh, securing and uh, processing the most uh, complex crime scene that we've dealt with in the history of our department. Uh, we are doing that um, under the direction of the FBI and in partnership uh, with the ATF. We've secured the perimeter with members of the National Guard and the General is here. I'd like to thank the people who are working closely with us. Uh, we've received offers for, of assistance from Chicago, Los Angeles. Um, units have responded here from New York City and Baltimore. And we are working very closely with all of our partners on this uh, complex uh, investigation. I, um, um, I, I want to uh, stress that the area around the crime scene, which was yesterday was 15 blocks, has been reduced um, to about 12 blocks at this point in time. And we will continue to collapse that crime scene as the facts and circumstances make that available. We want to um, open up as many streets and, and get people into their buildings as quickly as we can. We're working diligently on that. But please be patient with us uh, in the time that we need to process the crime scene. We expect that that scene will go for another two days anyway, and uh, people should make appropriate plans. Again, I want to stress that any information that you have, any videos or photographs that happen, not just at that scene, but anywhere in the, in the immediate vicinity, could be helpful to this investigation. Uh, our, our focus is uh, on processing that evidence right now, and we're looking forward to working with our, uh, with our partners uh, to bring the individuals who are responsible for this heinous crime to, uh, to justice. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. <clears throat> My name is Timothy Albin. I'm the superintendent of the Massachusetts State Police. <clears throat> As I said uh, earlier in one of our briefings, there's really uh, uh, two or three parts to this investigation. There's the investigative part, which clearly the FBI has taken the lead on, but there's also 
a uh, uh, logistical and, and uh, presence uh, component of this. So I, I'm speaking to the public. You are going to see an enhanced presence from the Boston police, from the state police, from the National Guard, and from our law enforcement partners through the metropolitan Boston area over the next days and probably longer. Uh, that's not for any particular reason other than to provide some comfort and uh, to the public who are using transportation centers or going about their business. So uh, we are engaged with the MBTA police uh, in the T. You will see more troopers. You'll see National Guardsmen there. You'll see MBTA police like you do every day. But that presence will be significantly enhanced. We're doing that for the comfort of the public. We're looking for cooperation from the public. It's not to inconvenience anyone, and we don't think that it will be. You might also see an enhanced presence at Logan Airport as well. That's not for any particular reason, again, other than to solicit cooperation from the public and seek out tips or, or information. The last thing I want to say is there have to be hundreds, if not thousands, of photographs or videos or observations that were made down at that finish line yesterday. And they're sitting out there amongst everyone that's watching this uh, event this morning. And I would encourage you to bring forward anything. You might not think it's significant, but it might have some value to this investigation. The mayor's giving you tip lines. There are plenty of those. The FBI has them as well. If you call in, I assure you that someone will follow up on your photographs or videos that you want to submit for consideration. Thank you very much. Good morning. My name is Daniel Conley. I'm the district attorney here in Boston. What, what occurred yesterday in Boston was an act of cowardice. While there will be an opportunity in the future at the conclusion of this investigation to officially define this act, make no mistake, an act of cowardice and of this severity cannot be justified or explained. It can only be answered. To that end, some of the finest investigators at the local, state, and federal levels have been working through the night to not only conduct interviews and process the scene, but to ensure that those interviews are legally sound and that the evidence is recovered with the greatest care. At the same time, police and other law enforcement agencies have been actively working to ensure the safety of our city. At this point, the loss that we have suffered is enormous. But thanks to the efforts of EMTs, police officers, firefighters, volunteers, ordinary citizens, and of course doctors, nurses, and the medical staff at Boston's world-class hospitals, we can say with absolute certainty that more lives were saved. For this, we can all give thanks. In the days and the weeks to come, we will do our very best to keep the public and the media apprised and advised of the progress of this investigation and our work. It is important, however, for the sake of the victims and of this city that our investigators be given the room to do their jobs so that the truth can be found and so that justice can be served. Moments like this and our response to them define who we are. In the past 24 hours, this city of Boston has shown its strength, its compassion, and its determination to see justice done. Thank you, Dan. <clears throat> We're happy to take questions. We will, um, we're going to try to take as many questions as you have. Um, so uh, maybe we'll just go from side to side, if that's, uh, uh, that, that, yeah. What helps to reassure you that there will not be more? Is there any specific just evidence didn't that well, more than the evidence is the extraordinary cooperation among these uh, law enforcement agencies, as the mayor and others have, uh, have said, at the federal, state, and local level, um, and indeed from the region. Uh, we have an unprecedented level of law enforcement uh, support and engagement here, and they are working very, very well and very seamlessly with each other under the leadership of the FBI. And that gives me a lot of comfort. It should give the, the public comfort as well. Right over here. The process yeah. so far that helps you understand uh, something, maybe from the materials, that helps you understand the, um, the level of complexity of the device itself, the level of sophistication or the origin of the materials that would help you understand what the of a domestic source or international source? I think, I think I know what you're getting at. Let me, let me turn it over to Rick, who I think is going to not comment. <laughs> Thank you, Governor. 
Uh, I can't comment on, on that aspect of that. What I think is important to say, what I would like to, uh, uh, on behalf of the Boston JTTF here today, is say that there is no known imminent physical threat at any location where we are conducting and might be conducting investigative activity right now. I want to put that out to the American public, to the citizens of the city of Boston and, and the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Mr. Governor, can you tell us, first of all, can you tell us anything about the nature of the devices? And secondly, can you comment on the fact that there have been a sweep in the area? And how is it that two devices this powerful can be I'm not going to be able to comment on that, on the nature of the device right now. Can you confirm, sir, that ISIS and also Mohammed Hassan Bada, are they in custody right now or under guard at a local hospital? No, I'm not going to say uh, who is who or might or might not be in custody right now. Can you confirm that ICE took one person from Ocean Avenue who was under custody and is looking or has found a second person who is a roommate in that unit? And David, what I can say is ICE is a key component of our Boston Joint Terrorism Task Force. They are active with us right now and are interviewing witnesses with us and assisting us uh, in integrally with this investigation. There's been a lot of talk about photos, and there was one photo yesterday uh, went viral showed a man standing on a roof in the background. Have you been able to confirm that that man is the man who was shot photo? Well, we, we are processing a lot of photographic, digital photographic evidence right now. As, we, as several speakers have said today, including the governor, we encourage the continued submission of any photographic evidence that could lead to lead value, but I can't, I can't comment on, the, uh, on, on specific tips or leads right now. Can you tell us about, can you tell us about um, the surveillance cameras in the area? Are you able to use those and how they are helpful and anything about what you are seeing on them? And Karen, I think uh, Commissioner Davis can probably speak best about surveillance cameras in the area. Again, I think we're processing all the digital photographic evidence that we possibly can right now as quickly as possible with resources from FBI headquarters and Quantico, and that is a priority of the investigation right now. But I'd let Commissioner Davis speak about the uh, video cameras. Thank you, Rick. It's a basic investigative protocol at this point in time for us to secure all the video that's in the area. So uh, even as we were removing victims uh, yesterday, offices were assigned to uh, go into the uh, local establishments and, and secure those videos. Uh, there are a large number of them. So there's a logistics issue right now. Uh, we are working uh, with the FBI. They're sending special teams uh, to process that information. It's our intention to go through every frame of every uh, video that we have uh, to determine exactly who was in the area. This is probably one of the most well photographed areas in the country yesterday. As far as people coming and going from the city for work, personal use, obviously it's very difficult to move around Copley Square. Are you asking people to stay away? Is that the best recommendation or do you want people to come and go? We want people to come and go. We want you to live your life. Um, we want you to be vigilant. Uh, there's, there's no reason to, to not come into the city. Uh, but we do have a threat, and, and we are working diligently to try to reduce that threat. Uh, we want you to, 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 to go about your business. Give us uh, a little room in the Copley Square area. Be patient with us there as we process this scene. But we are trying to turn it back to the businesses and to the community as quickly as, as we can after that evidence is collected. Can you comment on the pictures? What do you, you might have 100,000 pictures out there. What do you want people to look for? What should they, if I'm going through my pictures? Well, that's a good question, actually. That's a good question. What, what we would like is uh, forwarding any photos that you have around the time of the blast and particularly in that area. But also tell us wh what time those photos were taken, okay? So we don't have to go through the electronic signatures. We have some data as to when these photos were taken. Naturally, <laughs> photos taken closer to the blast, just before, just after, those are going to be critical and we're going to try to prioritize those. But it would give us the, the photos and as much information that, that can help the investigators uh, move forward. <laughs> There's no evidence of that. There's no evidence that they've been trash cans have been removed from the marathon as part of the security protocol? There is an EOD sweep that was done. There were two of them done that morning. One was done early in the morning, and a second one was done uh, an hour before the first runners came across. Uh, those two EOD sweeps did not turn up any evidence. But because there is unrestricted access to the race course, simply because it's 28 miles long, uh, people can come and go and, and bring items in and out. They're all victims, as far as I know. I'm sorry. 
No. No, we, we don't have any information on that. Can you give us an idea, sir, can you give us an idea of the breakdown of the impact of the two separate bombs in terms of casualties, just numbers, you know, which one was... You know, we, we, we have a number of 176 casualties that, that uh, presented at area hospitals. That's including hospitals on the South Shore, so not just in Boston. 176 is the best number I have right now. 17 of those individuals are critical at this point in time. Three fatalities. In terms of the two bombs, sorry, 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 in terms of the two bombs, though... No one's in custody, right? Sir? No one's in custody. You've all, you've all said that there's, a, that there's an individual responsible for this. Does that mean that you're ruling out any group that's responsible for it? Just no. Agent <coughs> Deloria, you, you specified various locations. Oh, you're responsible. Thanks, Agent. I, this, as an ongoing investigation, our, our investigation certainly will not be confined very likely to the city limits of Boston. Uh, it would extend out to the eastern Massachusetts area. This will be a worldwide investigation. We will take, go where the evidence and the leads take us. We will go to the ends of the earth to identify the subject or subjects who are responsible for this uh, d uh, despicable crime and we will do everything we can to bring them to justice. Are you now the point of your investigation where you receive transnational assistance of any sort? I can't comment on, on that aspect of the investigation right now. Certainly, we will are we were using the full capacities of the FBI to its full no. worldwide extent. Tell us what came of the investigation of the Department of Ocean Avenue, the search of that department. Did you interview anyone there? Has anyone there been I think the best way I can address that question is what I, what I previously said earlier, that we are interviewing a variety of witnesses right now in a variety of locations, and that is ongoing, and that is the most I can say about that right now. Again, that would be commenting on specific leads and investigative activity that might compromise our investigation, so I really can't comment on that right now. I would just say that we're, we are continuing. We have a multitude of resources on the street right now, the Boston Joint Terrorism Task Force, many components of which are with me on the stage here today, uh, are out in the street right now conducting all logical investigation as quickly as possible. I, I would say that we're, we're just, we're, uh, we're, we are out in the street in a variety of areas, both in the city of Boston and outside the city of Boston, conducting uh, an, an investigation where the leads and evidence take us. I was not aware of any threat information prior to the marathon. I am, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I'm not aware of any physical threat information right now from any uh, unexploded devices or any further devices. I'm not aware of any information, and to the best of my knowledge, there is no uh, imminent physical threat uh, anywhere uh, uh, associated with this investigation. I'd say to the folks who are watching us, we have a city that's resilient, a city that's working together. Law enforcement's working on this issue uh, since it started, and uh, you know uh, we need cooperation from the public. Uh, folks out there know that something's going on. Uh, give it to the uh, FBI, the Boston Police, whatever law enforcement you want to give it to. But it's a resilient city, and we're uh, a city that get by this, and it's a uh, one incident that uh, will not mark the city's history. Thank you. The news conference from within the hour or so in Boston with the uh, mayor obviously there and several, a number of officials from Massachusetts and Boston and the special agent in charge. Here on C-SPAN, we are expecting to take you live to the White House in about 10... Uh, yesterday, in the, uh, in the blast, some uh, gravely, our thoughts go out to all of those injured and killed uh, and to their families and friends. I personally want to thank the extraordinary wor uh, first responders for their uh, just extraordinary work yesterday. Um, every single one of them, those who were on site and those who got to the site promptly uh, thereafter performed beautifully as have the area hospitals and I've been calling around uh, to the heads of the hospitals personally to thank them uh, as well. It's our hope that tomorrow we will organize an interfaith prayer service to help our community heal. We don't have details on that yet, but we will uh, provide those details when we, when we have them. There is a support center 
that was opened yesterday in what we call the castle opposite uh, the Park Plaza Hotel on uh, Arlington and Stewart Street, I think it is. The mayor and his uh, uh, has uh, provided staff uh, to help people cope with uh, uh, with this extraordinary event, and it will. And more. Here's a look. For coming this morning, uh, less than 24 hours after yesterday's act of terror, we wanted to organize uh, a briefing for you with the information that we have. The mayor is here, uh, the members of our congressional delegation, all of the law enforcement leadership. We have several people who want to present uh, to you this morning and take your questions. A couple points I want to, uh, I want to mention at the outset. Uh, I told you yesterday that the uh, FBI has taken charge of the investigation. Special Agent in Charge Rick Delorier uh, will speak um, shortly. Uh, it's important to clarify that two and only two explosive devices were found yesterday. Other parcels, all other parcels in the uh, area of the blast have been examined, but there are no unexploded bombs. There were no unexploded explosive devices found. Uh, over 150 people were injured. Uh, need information also. That number is 617-635-4500. And over the last uh, several hours, we've received calls from all over the world to ask us information about the uh, our tragedy and how they could help us. Uh, so this is a t bad day for Boston, but I think that if you pull together, we'll get through it. We're strong, so a lot of people are willing to work together to make this a better place for all our people. And so as we gather here today with all our officials, let's say Boston will overcome. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Senator? Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the President of the United States has pledged his full support uh, in all efforts both to keep the city safe and to find the person who did this and bring them to justice. Uh, we did not have to reach out to the President. The President reached out to us. He called the Governor, he called the Mayor, he called the members of the delegation because the President is actively involved here in responding. On behalf of our congressional delegation, Senator Cowan is here with me. And will be open from 9, I think, until 5 o'clock or beyond uh, this evening. Finally, um, everyone should expect uh, continued heightened police presence, uh, and everyone should continue uh, personally to be vigilant. The investigation continues, uh, and until it is done, uh, all of those uh, uh, in law enforcement, represented by the leaders uh, here, will be present in force uh, in the area around the blast and throughout the city. And with that, let me turn it over to Mayor Menino. Uh, thank Mayor. you, Governor. Uh, yesterday, the terror was brought to uh, the city of Boston. Tragedy was brought to one of our neighborhoods also. This is a close na place, the city of Boston. Here we know our neighbors. We grieve for them. We grieve for the little boy who we knew from Dorchester. But also today I want to say uh, we know our heroes also. They are the men and women who wear helmets, who wear the badges, the runners, who helped us yesterday during this uh, time of need. And as we get go together on this issue with all the law enforcement officials, we're going to make sure the city pulls together. You know, we got it under control. Let's continue to work together. Let's keep offering a, a helping hand to individuals who may need it during this uh, very difficult time in our city's history. But I just say to all of you, I've uh, been a mayor for 20 years now. I've never seen uh, law enforcement pull together, working together to solve our crime in our city as they have, but also help people pull together, the business community, the neighbors, everyone. This is a tragedy, but Boston's a strong city. We're a city that'll get through this. And uh, like the governor said, we set up a uh, resource center over at the castle near uh, the Park Plaza Hotel, where staff will be there available to give information to individuals who've been involved in the marathon. It's open from 9 to 5, and the phone number is, uh, let me think of that phone number, 635-5040, I believe. And, uh, and our hotline, is city, no, the number is, the wrong number, 617-534-5050. And also, the 24-hour hotline that you need.